you so much, everyone, for coming. We really appreciate it. We didn't know that this hideous weather today, how many people were actually going to turn out. So it was really nice of you all to come um, and spend some time with us. And hopefully I can make this clicker work. I think we could all agree it is tough getting around the region. And it's not just on 395 and 66, but it's on Route 28, 29, 57. And the region is growing. We were actually in a meeting this morning with NMBTA and they were talking about some of these statistics. Um, between 2016 and 45, the region is going to add 1.5 million more people, 1.1 million more jobs, 640,000 more households, and most of that growth is going to be in the suburbs such as Fairfax, Seville, Dale City, Gainesville, and Manassas. So all of that congestion and growth leads to commuters who are stressed out. And what we're looking for as commuters is improved quality of life, a healthier lifestyle, a cleaner environment, and a world-class community for us to live and visit and work in. As employers, we want business continuity, recruitment and retention of workforce, returning customers, and return on investment. And I can attest as a boomer, it's not just millennials who want work-life balance. <laughs> Since what we do for a living oftentimes pays the bills for most people, work ends up being the priority, with time for family, friends, and yourself taking a backseat. And it's all about time and getting some back for the things that are important to you. Um, a statistic um, that's recently been presented to us is that traveling on the Virginia Express lanes saves you 17.5 um, average minutes per trip, so for a total of 35 um, saved minutes for a round trip. And just a quick moment on what some of the benefits um, for the express lanes are. Um, on I-95 and 395, they've got hot lanes projects of their own. I'm just going to focus on the 66 um, hot lanes. But we've got 22.5 miles of new express lanes coming. I'm sure that everyone's seen, at least everyone's out this way, um, has seen that. It's been ongoing, but it really hasn't hit the apex yet. That's coming this spring and this summer. Um, so buckle up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've got, um, on the 66, with the uh, hot wings will also offer us a more reliable and faster trip. Um, with people that have, or vehicles with three or more occupants are gonna be able to ride on the hot lanes for free. Buses are gonna be able to ride on the hot lanes for free. Van pools and carpools on the hot lanes for free. And for those with three and less, you can ride on the hot lanes, you're just going to pay a toll to do so. We're also gonna be able to offer new and improved bus service, um, which will be able to take advantage of those faster commute times. We've also got 4,000 new park and ride lots coming, which is a huge change for the side of the county. Um, those lots are going to be at University Boulevard in Gainesville and also on Bowlesville Road in Manassas. We've got interchange improvements coming and, very exciting, 11 miles of new bike and pedestrian trails coming um, that will integrate with some of the local trails in Fairfax County and the Brentsville County. I am the TDM program manager. So OmniRide provides a robust network of transportation options that assist commuters in Prince William County, and the TDM services are there to complement those transportation services. TDM stands for Transportation Demand Management, and that is how we make the infrastructure really work for us by helping people use existing and new infrastructure through transit, ride sharing, walking, biking, and telework. So the first program I'm going to focus on is our Omni Match Ride Matching Program. This is a free ride matching service for anyone in Prince William County, and it assists commuters to get out of their single occupancy vehicles and into a ride sharing arrangement such as carpooling, vanpooling, or slugging. And we also provide assistance to vanpool owner operators. Um, there's financial assistance by way of van start, van save, and personal property tax programs. Um, that personal property tax program, by the way, makes it so that vanpool owner operators in Prince William County don't pay personal property tax, um, which is a great benefit. And we also help provide them with a list of potential riders so that they can keep their vans um, full. And I'll just take a quick second to tell you a story about um, a true ride-sharing story. Um, last week, a gentleman reached out to me, and I had provided him with a list of ride-sharing prospects about two years ago. And he actually asked for them a lot, but 
I was happy to provide it because I like it when people reach out to me and kind of give me the personal touch. So for about three weeks, he and I were best friends, and I was sending him list after list, and we kept expanding the search to Haymarket and Gainesville, even the Plains, because he was saying, you know, someone from the Plains might be willing to drive out to Haymarket and get in the carpool, and this gentleman was driving from his home in Gainesville to the Ronald Reagan Center in D.C. And then I heard from him for the first time out of the blue blue sky last Thursday. Hey, I've been up and running for two years. It's been great, but one of the people in the carpool is changing their hours. Can you provide me another list? So I was happy to do it. I did. I went all over the place. Probably found anywhere from 25 to 30 you know, decent prospects for him. And he wrote me back and said, thanks a lot. I know what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Um, and so that's kind of how the service works. And it's free. The other program that I manage is the Employer Outreach Program, and this is a program where we work very closely with the employers in Prince William County, Manassas, Manassas Park, to create and expand our Commuter Benefits Program. So we work directly with employers, um, and we give them information on biking to work, transportation, or, um, transit services, carpooling and van pooling, telework programs, um, emergency preparedness programs. <coughs> And we do this at um, meetings with HR, lunch and learns, um, virtual formation meetings, health and wellness fairs, transit fairs, Earth Day events. And I'll just give a um, anecdote for this too. Um, I work very closely with the folks at Lockheed Martin, and they recently reached out to us because a lot of the millennials that work for that organization have been coming to them and saying, we need alternatives for getting here. We don't all want to have to drive here every day in the single occupancy vehicle. So they wanted to beef up their wide matching program. So we're actually going to be promoting the Omni Match program internally at Lockheed Martin. They're going to be promoting it via email, through their newsletter. Um, they also have screens throughout the organization where they're going to put the website where people can go out and register for wide matching services. And then we're also going to be at their Earth Day event promoting it in April. So to kind of wrap up here, it takes a it takes a village to champion change, so please be a champion for transportation by telling your neighbor about our ride matching services, by promoting our bus routes to your spouse or your kids, um, and by inviting us to come to your place of business for event formation meetings or birthday events or um, benefit fairs. And thanks very much. Please stay in touch. Now I'm going to turn it over to Chuck. Thank you, Molly. Thank you. Holly didn't take near as much time as I was hoping to. <laughs> I'm going to uh, invoke the prerogative of age, and I'm going to not stand behind the podium. Um, everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. I guess that's the benefit of being at the podium. Am I just forward? Yes. Oh, too far. No. My title slide's at the front, so we're going to skip that. Um, going on three years ago now, we're in our third year, in fact, of a strategic planning effort. Um, some of you, maybe all of you, remember a couple years ago, PRTC as an organization um, was in a pretty significant fiscal crisis. And um, during the process of figuring out what to do about that, we determined that we needed to set a strategic course for the organization uh, for a lot of reasons. The, certainly the fiscal realities were one. But I'm going to ask Holly to start around um, a graph. And I've done a lot of presentations <laughs> over the last three years, but if you were to ask me, to put a one-slide presentation together that explained the need for developing a strategic plan. This is the one slide that I would uh, present, would provide. It's a really simple graph, and what it does is show the difference in our transit service ridership between our fiscal year uh, 2012 and 2017, so a relatively short period of time, five years. Um, in 2012, we were carrying over, in some months, um, total for a weekday, as many as 300,000 people on weekdays 
in a month. In 2017, that number was significantly less, just a little over 200,000 at its top. So in that five-year period, we, it, on this graph, it looks like we lost a third of our transit ridership on a weekday. That's the reason we do a, a strategic plan. That gap, that, that intervening five years, what that represents is the amount of change that occurred in our environment during that period. Significant change. There are a lot of reasons for that drop in ridership. Um, everything from sequestration, removing 100,000 uh, executive branch employees from the federal workforce, to the introduction of new services like Uber and Lyft. And um, big thing, price of gas, right? All of these negative impacts on our ridership and the extent of that change in a very short period of time our inability as an organization to pivot and adapt to those new realities. It's very stark and very apparent here. There are two other things that I'd point out about this, though. Uh, the first being that 200,000 people in a month on weekdays is still a good chunk of people. For us, or for me in particular, ridership is a measure of our value to the community. That's what it measures. It measures our impact, it measures our value to the environment in which we sit. So that, that 200,000, we were still caring, we still had impact, we still had a significant impact, but we were not as impactful as we were just five years before, right? So all of this change, we did not change. We needed that, a, a strategic, review of what we did, a strategic plan to plot our course forward to bring us back to that level of impact that we had just five years before. Right. That, that's really the <coughs> nut and the, the most important thing in that chart when I look at it. We still have impact, but we don't have the impact that we used to have. We stayed still, the rest of the world changed. So what, what do we need to do to get us ourselves as an organization and as a member of the community back to that point where, where, where we are effective in what we do? So last three years we've been working on this. Um, same time, Prince William County was developing their strategic plan. They're updating their strategic plan. This presentation is actually repurposed. I, I gave a version, or we gave a version of it to the Board of Supervisors about a year ago. And what they asked to see is what were the commonalities between our strategic recommendations and their strategic plan. Um, you can see they're pretty similar. Very well aligned with the county's goals. Um, the two things that I would point out, though, is that they changed this section of the strategic plan. It was no longer the transportation section. It was now the mobility section. Mobility is an interesting word because for a very long time, it was um, really tied to a specific set of ser services more along the lines of human service transportation, transportation for seniors, for the disabled. When, when the concept of new urbanism really began to take hold in some of the cities, people realized, began to realize that the same concepts of mobility that had been used at, for reference for um, other groups, for, for certain groups in society, certain segments of society, actually applied to everybody. So that's why you're seeing the term mobility used to refer to what we used to call transportation. Right? Mobility is the new term. It's how we all move, not just certain segments of the, pe of the population. The other thing is this word, multimodal. And I, I think we all know what that is, or have a, a, an idea of what it is. When we were in the midst of this, uh, putting together our strategic recommendations, we did a fair amount of 
outreach, including at the chamber here. One of the things that we really found out, to uh, much to our surprise, is that no one, no one thought of us as a, as a multimodal transportation system. You run buses. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Holly just presented that that's not all we do, but not a lot of people know that. Um, we have programs that basically people aren't aware of. That's our fault. We messed up. We didn't tell anybody about these other things that we do. Um, so when we're looking at this, at, at strategic plan and what we want to accomplish, how to get back to that level and that, that impact, one of the questions we need to answer is, how do we get people to understand? How do we change the perception of our organization? What is it that we need to do? What kind of services do we need to provide? And how do we need to promote them? More importantly, what kind of partnerships do we need to build? So the <laughs> it was actually phase two of our strategic plan, but we drew up a bunch of uh, strategic recommendations. A bunch is a bunch. There were 19 of them. But they were divided into four areas. Administrative, organizationally, what do we need to do? Um, how do we need to work changes into our transit system, our trans, uh, transportation demand management system? What can Holly help us with? And uh, what does it look like over the next five, ten years? What are the things that are happening now, but that we think will also happen in the future? How can we leverage those to bring new mobility concepts into the community, to help the community move? So those are the four areas, and in each four of the areas, um, we devised a, a, some sort of common themes. And they're really simple, and they're things we should have been doing all along. But there were a lot of things that we really weren't, or weren't doing well enough, or enough of. Things like coordinating with jurisdictional staff. That's, you know, that's a two-way street, but we certainly could have uh, been doing a better job. Um, pursuing innovation, this is, for us, this is a very interesting one because there's been a lot of things happening in transportation over the last couple of years. When you think of all the change that's taken place, the new concepts being brought in, the new services being brought in, um, and we were still doing the same things that we were doing back in 2012. It, it's a difficult thing for us um, for any, anyone in the position of managing public funds, right, how much do you put yourself out there? Are you really, you know, if you're good stewards, can you really do that pilot project that you think will have impact? So this, this was how fast can you move within the bureaucracy? These are real challenges for, for that idea of pursuing innovation. Um, and, and this one, leveraging human capital and technology. We've made huge investments in technology for our transit services. And despite what this chart shows, we're not really all idiots there. <laughs> There's a good bit of human capital that we can leverage. It's a question of how we do it and what do we ask each other to do. Um, and everything's focused pretty much on that last one. And again, market share for us isn't, doesn't come down to fare box <laughs> revenue. It's a good thing to have, right? But that's not, that's not why we measure ridership and the, pe the number of people who are using services like the services Holly provides. Market share to us is, um, it, it's a representation of utility within the community, right? That's what it is, and that's what we're after. So you have the focus areas, the key themes, and then we set, up, set aside some time to think about, well, how do we move through those key themes? What do we need to do? So I, we identified um, a number of key actions, and the list you'll see here is not all of them, right? There were 19 recommendations, all with key actions. The one thing is that the, the, the theme throughout is 
really building partnerships, enhancing the ones that we have, and building new ones to make ourselves <coughs> more a part of the community and to allow our impact to grow. Um, so you see things like engage the business community in planning discussions. Good. Um, the forces of economic development should be in that first conversation, right? They, they shouldn't be ignored and they shouldn't be brought in at the end to be told what's going to happen. They should be part of the initial conversation. Um, partnerships definitely throughout. And I, I think I mentioned before that the recommendations were really things that we should have been doing all along, that we either weren't or weren't doing effectively enough. And it's so, anybody will tell you, it's so easy to get caught up in what you do in the day to day that you forget about some of these more important things that will help you down the line with the amount of impact that you have. Um, so this, these are some slides left over from um, my, our presentation to the Board of Supervisors. And they just essentially tie up their mobility <laughs> goals with the actions that we um, put forward as part of our strategic plan. So it's a, definitely a con uh, point of concentration for the county to, do, to decrease the folks leaving the county for work, right? A core of economic development. So we identified um, a couple actions that we could take in support of that. Once again, the, the concentration is on partnerships throughout. Same thing with decreasing congestion and travel time. And this is interesting because it, it, it kind of works across purposes with the first one because um, often we think of congestion and travel time mainly on the interstate corridors, right? And it's been a focus of what we do for 30 years. Um, and then simply in increase the use of HOV or um, SOV, non-SOV alternatives. Right? This is the last slide and uh, so I'll, I'll stop here, but carry the conversation forward. And the other thing is I'm, I'm, I'm open right, to conversation here. Questions, specific questions, non-specific questions. Questions about the strategic plan itself. Questions about our services. But the last slide is we've identified through the strategic plan the things that we think we need to do over the next 10 years with that concentration on building partnerships, being more innovative, more flexible, more nimble. Um, pursuing innovation is a, a key theme, definitely. So how do we do that? Particularly when it comes to building partnerships. How do we make sure we get where we need to go? And so I have a little process diagram here, but it, it really comes down to that first one, building a a formalized process for seeking feedback, getting information, sharing data, sharing ideas and concepts, and communicating that back and forth, right? So that allows you to uh, partner on initiatives, partner on outreach, develop a shared vision. You know, I, I think if, if we look at the commonalities between our planning and the county's planning, you can definitely see that shared vision. But how is that vision, is that vision shared across the greater community? So we need to put it ourselves through our partnerships uh, to, in a place to develop and promote that shared vision, whatever it is. And then develop and share the, the messages, develop messaging around that vision and to share it with the rest of the community. But you know, it's a, it's a cyclical thing, but it all comes back to that top box and building that formalized structure so that happens. Um, I thought about this, and how do, how do you accomplish that? So I've, I'm proposing the development of a series of councils 
and they would work very much like the chamber works with their with their councils. Um, and they would be focused on specific initiatives or specific uh, subject areas. Slugging Council, Van Pool Council, Active Transportation, Active Transportation for those of you who don't know, biking, walking, that kind of thing. Um, councils around those sort of, not necessarily single issues, but single issues. And I think we'd like to develop um, an economic or business council focused exclusively on transportation. We think that's a really good idea. Um, we'd like to partner with the chamber. We're willing to take the lead. Holly and I would love to schedule once every three months for a group to get together, a, a, a group of businesses, employers, focused on defining what the issues are and working through those issues to propose solutions. And timing is everything, right? So we find ourselves, despite a recent fiscal crisis, we find ourselves in a position where we have access to some not insubstantial sources of funding mainly by virtue of the hot lanes. On 95, 395, we just began, begun an effort to split up amongst the jurisdictions in the 95 corridor a minimum $15, $15 million a year over the next 68 years. Tremendous amount of money. Um, a similar thing is going on in the I-66 corridor funds generated by the toll revenues. We've, we've already begun splitting toll revenues that come from inside the Beltway. Once the outside the Beltway express lanes are complete, there also will be an annual transit payment. It's kind of what they call it. Um, these are significant chunks of money, and it's there's an open competition for this amongst the jurisdictions and transit agencies in both corridors. So how do we leverage these outside sources of funding and what do we do with them? Um, essentially, it's a, it's a real simple process. They put out a call for projects. You come up with an idea, you flesh it out, and you submit. Right? If you get awarded the money, you move forward on implementing the project. So. One of the purposes of these of the councils that we've been considering is to build a program and build a framework to generate ideas to take advantage and leverage these funds that will be available. And what are some of the types of projects that you're thinking about? Uh, like I understand that the, the councils are going to need to generate those, but like what are like the seeds of something? Okay. For the, we've already been through two years of funding cycles for the I-66 inside the Beltway. The, the formal name for the program is Commuter Choice. And uh, the Northern Virginia Transportation Commission administers the, the funding program for I-66 inside the Beltway. Uh, so we've been through two, two cycles, two annual cycles of funding. They are currently funding uh, the bus service that we run from Gainesville to the Pentagon. And then in the last cycle of funding, we received funding for uh, three services. <coughs> One of them is um, a couple extra um, bus trips coming out of the Gainesville area and going to uh, Tyson's Corner. We run a service to the metro station there. We, they pay for two extra trips, one morning and one afternoon. The other two projects, though, are a flexible van pool program and then a, um, a commuter lot shuttle that's technology enabled. So there's a relatively new concept being applied across the country that's kind of generally purchased as micro transit. But instead, it, what it does is the well, easiest way to describe it for most people is Uber in a bus. 
or in a, a van, you know, in a vehicle that will hold 10, 15, 20 people. So it is a, you build a program that allows for uh, flexible stops, flexible times. You build an app and you put it on uh, a smartphone. And then your riders can schedule a pickup or drop off through the use of the, the, the cell phone app, smartphone app. Um, the advantages for operating a micro transit service, first of all, it, is the flexibility. Um, the second part of that is it's easier to scale with an on-demand service. It's easier to scale your resources to actual demand. So it's less likely that uh, you'll have a vehicle out, you know, a 30-foot vehicle or 40-foot vehicle out running with nobody on it or for a stretch or something like that. You have a lot more control of how you provide <coughs> your resources. You only put out what you need to put out, basically. Um, that microtransits have been tried a couple times around the country. It, well, it's not varying degrees of success. It, it's been hard to find the right niche for it. Um, I'm a big, <coughs> big believer in directed purpose. You don't throw something out just to throw it out. All right. You have to have a. There has to be a reason <laughs> to do it. Um, the computer lot shuttle idea, and this would expand or is expandable to like the broad run BRE. The issue it would look to solve is <coughs> parking capacity. The Cushing lot, 443 spaces, went into service in 2014. I don't know how many months before it was full. Like at capacity, it's currently at capacity. That acts as a, um, a constraint on the number of people who can use the services provided from that point, right? Our, we can't grow our bus ridership because there's no place for people to park to catch the bus. Um, van pools can't grow because there's no place for people to park to catch the van pools. You can't carpool. Flooding can't develop. Yes, sir? I understand that uh, at one point in time you were planning on locating a, a, a bus facility off of Ballsford Road and the Patriot Business Center? What's the status of that? We had our groundbreaking two weeks ago. Yeah. Two weeks See, that's ago. I they I used shovels that had the date 2015 on them, but that's <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> do you own the property? We own the property. And how much property do you have? I can't tell you off the top of my head. It's been something I haven't been intimately involved in. But it will serve as a uh, a maintenance facility and has some space for admin, for administrator. The, the big problem for us that it looks to solve, or two, well three, we'll call it three problems. One of them is for all the services we run out of the western end of the county, we have to send buses from our Woodbridge facility. So 12, 15, 20 miles to reach their start point. That gets expensive when you operate a lot of service and over the next couple years, particularly once the express lanes come in to uh, open up, once toll day one hits there, we're going to be running a lot of services on the 66 corridor. So we needed to have a place on this side of the area that cut down on that, that non-revenue movement. You know, we're not carrying anybody over there. Um, the other thing is we're, we've been living out of facility, uh, out of a facility, that was built for 100 buses. And right now we have um, 180. So we're well oversubscribed. Um, and that extends not just to places to park the bus, but we're trying to maintain that fleet with five bays, six bays, maintenance bays. So we need to expand in order to continue to maintain vehicles properly and also simply to have a place to park them at night. Um, the bus yard is quite a mess. Uh, if you go by there on a weekend, you'll see them everywhere, including on property that we don't necessarily own. The police, uh, down the so, good question. Thank you for asking. But we were, we were very proud that we got, got to get those shovels out after about 30 years. <laughs> that was a big deal. Yes, ma'am. 
if I'm, I'm personally I'm a strong advocate of learning from your failures and earlier you said that one of your major failures was getting the word out how do you foresee yourself going forward and getting the word out in which ways a couple of things that those the partnerships will be a big part of that all right that that was that was a failure I mean just it's something that we did not concentrate enough on, right? Um, another example of this is uh, rebranding. And that extends, if, if, have, if any of you have seen our new, uh, we got new buses, new commuter coaches uh, a couple months ago. And they, we didn't have them painted. They were just white vehicles for a while. And then we introduced our new color scheme, the blue and the green and the big swirly O, um, very simplified. It doesn't say Potomac and Rappahannock Transportation Commission anywhere on the bus. It's just the single, <laughs> single word. Is it a word? Yeah. Omni -ride. But um, that, that rebranding effort will go a, a decent way down this path, too. Um, Anytime you can use a 45-foot rolling billboard yes. to get the word about your services out is, is a good thing. Um, but that'll extend through um, <coughs> redesign of the website and et cetera, et cetera, <coughs> online. Um, it's the about community events, getting the yes, getting it's, the it's about the being more buses out in the community. It's about being more forward. Yes. Right. Participating more. Um, getting out of our offices. Okay. It, it's really that simple. Betty? Well, to that end, I wanted to commend on you, Ride, because you've uh, you know, become uh, much more active with the Chamber of Commerce. So to your goals of establishing those partnerships with the business community, I think you know, you're, I mean, hopefully you're getting good use out of that vehicle, and um, you know, we're, we're glad to see it. Um, and then I also wanted to ask sort of the, um, and you partially may have answered my question, but the whole TDM initiative, you're offering so many of the services which sound great and they're free, which is even greater. Um, but so how are you able to fund providing services like that? They're grant funded. Okay. And the wide matching services um, is funded through a grant from DRPT, mm -hmm. and it funds myself and at the moment a part-time wide matching assistant who's in the very near future, hopefully going to come full time, which is awesome because we definitely need um, her on full time. Mm -hmm. And then the employer outreach side is funded through a VDOT grant. The, the TDM programs, that uh, they've <coughs> long existed in a long time. The, the, the core, we, we refer to them as the core TDM programs. Um, they're, they don't have the expenses associated with them that running a bus service does, right? You, you're not going to spend $600,000 on a vehicle. Um, so it's really more of the human costs, and we're able to keep those within the footprint of two grants. Um, one from VDOT, they passed uh, congestion management, or congestion mitigation and air quality funds to pay for the employer services program. And then the state grant covers the commuter information that I mentioned. So locally, the local funds put into those two projects comes in at less than forty thousand dollars a year. Um, Holly's program. Uh, th there's there's an overarching regional program for commuter information. Commuter connections run out of um, MW Cog. Once every three years, they do a state of the commute survey to find out how things are going for folks. Um, Holly's program, the, the Omni Ride Ride Sharing Program, is what it's called now. We've rebranded everything. Um, <laughs> is, is either the first or second every three years in that survey as far as program awareness more residents of Prince William County in, in the survey are aware that that program exists than any other in Northern Virginia and the nearby suburbs of Maryland. For usage, her programs are also top. <coughs> so her program is better known and more utilized than the programs in Arlington and Fairfax and Alexandria. Um, that's not by accident, 
It, it, we're very fortunate to be in an environment where that commuter culture is very strong. So people want that information. But also there's a purpose, a, a purposeful deployment of resources, we'll say. Um, we use a concept called individualized marketing. Uh, lately it's been referred to as concierge service. But a real hand-holding and personalization of what Holly and her staff do that invite people to participate and invite them back. So when, when that survey comes out and we're at the top or near the top and those two true measures of the effectiveness of those programs or that program, that's the reason. 